Hello and welcome into Wednesday Wisdom. My name is Dr. Cameron Garber and I am here with Melody, one of the therapists here at Body Smart. And we are so excited to join you today for another edition of Wednesday Wisdom. Um, we definitely are excited to share with you something that is very much a passion of mine. And that is telling you more about 80-20 style of running. Yes, and it works and it's exciting because you don't have to kill yourself with every run. I know some people like to, but we want to talk about why you get faster by running slower more often. Um, and that's the whole 80-20 concept. So you still get to run fast. In fact, you probably get to run faster than what you're currently running just 20% of the time. The other 80, we want you to go slow and steady. And so we want to talk to you about that today, why that's so important and why that works so, you've probably tried heart rate training before. A lot of runners have, and most runners that you talk to don't love it. And it's probably because they didn't do it correctly, and so they failed doing it and, and had bad, poor results. And so, how do we help runners um, know exactly how to do 80-20 better? If that's been you, if you've had that issue before in, your, in the past, where you've tried heart rate training and it didn't work for you, let us know. I kind of want to hear your story, actually. Put that in the comments down below. Explain what you did, how you did, how you did it, kind of what heart rate training program you followed. I'd love to hear people's stories of how they did heart rate training and how it turned out for them. If it worked, if it didn't work, um, tell us your story. I would love to hear that. We here at Body Smart, we kind of love heart rate training, and, and that's what we're all about because it it doesn't lie. It tells you the truth about where you're really at. So Melody has done this pretty extensively, right, with your own training. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about what you do and don't like about heart rate training and the 80-20 method. Yeah, for sure. Well, when I first learned about uh, like the metabolic test yeah. and 80-20 running, I was obsessed with it because I love numbers. So this was totally, okay. yeah, totally that my thing. So um, I love the numbers. I love the graphs. So I stuck to 80-20 like religiously as I trained for my yeah. first 100 mile race last year. Mm -hmm. And when I first did my test, my like 50-50 fat burn zone, carb burn zone was about 140, 145. Right. And after sticking to this religiously for about a year, yeah. I did the test again. And then my 50-50 burn zone was, it was about 160, 165. So right. a huge difference. Huge difference. Yeah. And that, that was fun to see how that changed over time, right? Yeah. And then it can change over time. Yeah. And it, not only was it cool seeing the numbers, but just like feeling the difference in my mind and my body too. Right. I, I just felt stronger and faster. Um, and also running became a lot more enjoyable because right. I used to feel like I had to kill myself in every single run yeah. and I hated that. But once I started slowing down and just like really like absorbing my runs and enjoying it and like looking around me and so I learned to love running way, way more. Right. And, and so that's, that's one of the biggest keys is you do learn to love it more by slowing down. It's not so much of a chore as much as it's just this fun experience you get to go have. Because you basically get to go run at what your body is saying, like, this is where you need to be today. Yeah. And, and your heart rate changes a little bit from day to day, even at the same pace. And so that's why I love running according to heart rate instead of pace. Uh, there's no reason that I should run that speed just because I wrote that down on the page. Mm -hmm. If my body um, says I need to slow down on any given day or that I can run a little bit faster, depending on how well recovered you are and things like that, heart rate really is the most accurate way to kind of listen to your body and let you know how fast you you can or should be running that day. And so we really like it because with combined with that metabolic test where you can dial in the zones appropriately, you really can get the most bang for your buck out of zone training. So I think that's a big key, um, is making sure that you know your numbers well and know your zones well. And I think that's why most people struggle with zone training is they don't have the right numbers. They do like a two mile test or, you know, there's a bunch of different ways of figuring out where your zone should be, or they run with what their Garmin or Polar or whatever, you know, whatever app they're using tells them to run. And the problem is, is those numbers are just off. Mm -hmm. And we see that with a lot of fitness places that recommend heart rate zones, you know, where you get, you know, points for working out so hard or other things like that. Um, unfortunately the overwhelming majority of people their their zones don't line up correctly mm -hmm. 
And so, had you tried heart rate training in the past or paying attention to your heart rate much as you ran? Um, not really. I yeah. mean, I always paid, I mean, I looked at my heart rate to see where it was, but it didn't mean anything to me because okay. I didn't know anything about it. That's fair. So. Had you heard much about heart rate training prior to that? I hadn't. You hadn't? No. So that's, it's funny because it is kind of a hidden thing in, in running. Not hidden, but um, it, you'll read like a, an article in Running Magazine or other places that'll tout why it's so good or so important and, and things like that. Um, but then and, they don't explain how right. to use it. Yeah, or, or they do, but it's, it's still an estimate or a, a measurement or a, calcul or a calculation, I mean, instead of a measurement. And so the zones aren't, aren't quite right. So people hear about it, and it, it kind of comes through in waves, in fads, of people really liking it, it, or a new article comes out, people try it for a little bit, and then they, they don't succeed with it. And I would say the number one reason why is because the zones aren't accurate. If the zones are accurate, and if people slow down enough, that's probably the number two reason, mm -hmm. is people don't slow down enough and don't really stick to it. Um, and so they're training too hard still, and they're training too hard in a zone, trying to slow down but not quite slowing down enough. They're training in kind of that no man's land where you don't make progress. Mm -hmm. And so let's explain why that is, why you don't make progress. Um, I, so the reason why, going slow, so if either at the low end of your capacity or the high end of your capacity, why that matters um, is because that's where we make progress. At the low end of capacity is where we build endurance, where we're going slow enough that we're burning predominantly fat and we train our body to burn fat more efficiently. At the high end, we're working on the mechanics of speed. We're actually pushing ourselves um, to where we're working on getting faster. That in-between zone where most of us choose to run, um, kind of that, well, I can run this fast for anywhere between like 30 and 90 minutes. I can, I can run at that speed for about that amount of time. Um, and so the idea is with most people, I'm going to run at that pace or at that kind of range of paces, and I'm just going to try to go a little further and a little faster every day. And over time, that'll make me faster. And it just doesn't work that way. We wind up being too fatigued, too depleted, because we're burning almost all carbohydrate. So we're always depleted and we're always playing catch up on our carbs and our tendon and ligament recovery, uh, muscle recovery. And so because we're always playing catch up rather than getting back to normal and then having a workout and getting back to normal and having a workout, um, we, we never really get fully fueled back up. And so our workouts are always a little subpar. Or we're always feeling a little bit nicked up. Whereas when we do the 80-20, when you're burning predominantly fat during your runs, you're, you're never playing catch up. You're putting that load on the tendons and ligaments to where they need to make changes, but you're not putting so much damage on them that they're, they're really fighting to catch up. And then the high intensity stuff, we do enough of that that we make our body make a change but not so much that we're in a hole. And you felt that, right? As you trained, yeah. you felt the difference in not, not being so beat up. Huge difference. I, oh, I'm so passionate about this because yeah. I went from, you know, I had that same mentality of I'm going to run super hard every day and I'm going to try to push a little bit further every time, push a little bit faster every time. Yeah. And I was so tired all the time. And right. I just like got comfortable being tired. I, and I just thought that was normal. But then I started 80-20 running and all of a sudden I felt like a normal human again. Right. And I was able to feel like a normal human and also run 50 miles a week. Yeah. It was, it's awesome. Yeah. And, and that's still, when your mileage gets up higher, it still it can be fatiguing and you still need to, you know, have rest breaks and other things like mm -hmm. that within your training cycle. But it definitely allows you to, to build in a more sensible way where you're not always fatigued and depleted. Yeah. And, and you can and still function every yeah. day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And so that's, that to me is a huge thing. It's like you can actually make meaningful progress in a shorter period of time mm -hmm. by running slower and faster. But it's, it's the in-between that gets us in trouble. And right. so that no man's land, that zone three uh, work really kind of backfires because that's where most of us tend to hang out is like uh, mid to high zone three, low zone four is where most of us like to run if we just go on our self-selected pace. And unfortunately, that happens to be a no progress zone or, uh, you know, people call it 
no man's land or junk miles. Um, it just is that zone where we really aren't pushing either system. We're not training fat burning and we're not training speed. And so we don't get faster by running 1% faster, right? We have to really push that high end uh, envelope of where our mechanics are being challenged. Our, our cardiovascular system is really being challenged to get better. Um, just, you know, challenging it by a little bit, we're probably not going to make a meaningful change. At least, especially not enough of a change where kind of the time, uh, we start racing time as we get older as runners. And so with every year, you know, we, we decline just a little bit. And so if I'm, if I'm spending most of my mileage in that no man's land zone, that no progress zone, the just aging is going to slow you down more than what you're gaining in those maybe small incremental changes of, of pushing a little bit harder every day. So by slowing down, we allow ourselves to progress more during that same period of time. And we lose a lot less ground because it allows you to do more miles, uh, actually put more time more than miles. Um, it, it allows you to put more time on your feet so that you're increasing your, your total adaptation uh, to running. So more time on your feet, more time on your knees, more time in your hips, all of those things. And not to say that you have to train for a longer period of time. I think that's one thing with heart rate training that people think is that you have to run for longer um, to get the same effect. And that is absolutely not true. You don't have to run for more minutes. But the beauty is you can run for more minutes. So instead of running three days a week, you can run five, six, seven days a week without beating your body up as much because you're not going as intense. So a lot of people only run three days a week, not because of a time restriction as much as because if they run every day, they wind up getting injured. This allows you to get more time on your feet so you have a greater training adaptation. Um, so with your training, Melody, did you notice that you were able to get in more days, more time, more everything because you went slower more often? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. My husband and I love going on trips and we love hiking and kind of in the middle of our training, we would, it yeah. was kind of a, a break from running, but we, our, our vacation would consist of like hiking all day. Yeah. And it was awesome that we were able to hike all day and climb all these mountains and come home and we still felt fine. And then if you go play pickleball in the afternoon and still have energy. So right, yeah, it, I love it's it. It's awesome. I feel like it, it increases and improves your quality of life too. Oh, absolutely. So that's one of the things I love is that it does make it so that you can still lead an active lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So so often we are so fatigued from our run that we then don't really lead a very active lifestyle because we're so yes. beat up from it. And so exactly. we're less likely to be active because, oh, I already worked out today. So I earned couch time or whatever. And so, I earned couch time for eight hours because right, right. I worked out for one. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, it doesn't make sense, right? And so by exercising in a way that allows us to still have energy and, and be more active, we're actually, again, putting more total load on the system, but in a way that our body can keep up with so that we're, we're improving our body more quickly than a higher intensity bout. In fact, just this morning, I saw um, another article where they compared high intensity, so HIT training, versus just slow, steady training. And it was interesting. Fat adaptation, uh, glucose tolerance, all those things actually improved more with the consistent, uh, slow, steady than with the inconsistent HIT training. So HIT, HIT is still good, but only about one day a week. One day a week seems to give you just enough benefit that you're getting all the benefits of HIIT training, and then the other four or five days a week of just slow, steady movement seems to be kind of the best uh, combination. A couple days a week of strength training, you know, four to five days a week of slow, steady, and one day of HIIT, that seems to really be the best combination for maintaining general health and improving as a runner. Man, I feel like this is like a hard truth for a lot of people. I yeah. just know like, when I heard this in the very beginning, I was like, mm. Are you sure? Right. <laughs> I don't know. You honestly have to try it for yourself and feel the results yourself to, to really understand it. Right. Yeah, it, it, it is a hard thing. You know, we love to do classes or, you know, do that favorite, you know, dance, fitness or yoga or all these things. And they all have a piece, but they just can't be everything. If you do just yoga every day, you're going to decrease in lung function and decrease in overall, like, athleticism and, and other things like that. If you just run, you're gonna wind up 
with increased risk of injury, you're going to decrease your overall athleticism and mm -hmm. decrease um, even your ability to run if all you do is run. So you have to you have to have this balanced approach of doing some higher intensity work, some kind of cross training where we're doing you know lateral strengthening. You have to do strength training. That combination of it all all leads to you being coming a better runner. You still definitely have to get the miles and the time on your feet and everything, but balancing that out with other ways of strengthening fits into this 80-20 really well. All right, so hopefully that answers a lot of the questions you might have with 80-20. Definitely if you have questions or if you've tried 80-20 or um, just heart rate training in general, I wanna hear your story. Please drop those in the comments down below so we can hear your story about how you've tried heart rate training. and. If, if you have any more questions about it, feel free to reach out to us. I'd love to answer your questions about heart rate training and how you may be able to adapt this in your training so that you can get the most bang for your buck out of the time you're already spending running anyway. Let's make it so that every single run you do is, is really as effective as possible. So thanks so much for joining us. There's your uh, little nugget of Wednesday wisdom, and we hope to catch you on the next episode. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow, all that good stuff so that you can get our next uh, episodes. And we'll see you on the next one.